When you think about systems, they're always in movement. But this is very much almost like a photograph, freezing, you know, the decisive moment. This is sort of in that same manner. It's like a moment of grace that people can be sucked into, into sort of like a meditative state when they can think about their relationship to this large, large system that affects their everyday lives. Data has sort of loomed large in my work for a long time. Even though we feel like because of these automated systems that we've gotten so good at computer programming that we can control all things in the universe, um, I think it's important to know that there are these glitch moments that occur. I think it's just important to keep that in mind. It keeps us humble. Glitch art for me is any sort of disturbance in analog or digital media, any JPEG, or any movie file. You can open it up and text edit and look at the ASCII code and then manipulate that ASCII code to create glitch. You get this sense of comfort, not fighting technical hiccups, but seeing the beauty in them. Leading up to Jacksport, they had told us that there were only certain areas that we could see. We saw the container ships, and what I took away from that was just these shifts in scale, the extreme shifts in scale. So the human figure next to the shipping crane, next to the shipping container, next to the container ships. When I came back to the museum to look at the space, it just immediately clicked that all of the pieces in the painting and that main figure are a one-to-one -one relationship. So I took an actual at-scale uh, shipping container and put it into SketchUp, and the same with the shipping crane, and then centered them all around the origin point using some script, then twisted it in a way that I thought would be dynamic in the space. I would say one third of the piece here at MoCA is painted, and then two thirds is the, um, the fabric with the adhesive backing. That was in part to help me actually get the piece done in the amount of time I had. But more importantly, I think you get these sort of saturated colors and level of detail that it would be really challenging for me to paint those. And also it speaks to the fact that I use digital tools constantly, but I'm also a painter at heart, so I can oscillate between traditional and digital media. I like to describe the work as if the viewer was coming into the museum and looking at it for the first time. When they come towards the atrium and up the stairs, they should see just a sea of color, like tons and tons of color surrounding them. I hope that they're viscerally moved by the experience. I've never gotten to work at this scale, and then to have the piece actually be about scale. I mean, it's just perfect. I'm already kind of giddy just looking at the piece, um, just to see it at this scale, and then I think the colors, the colors are just gonna blow everyone away. You come into the atrium space and you're surrounded by the imagery, and that's super exciting to me. And I can't think of another space where I can do that.